two years since Private First Class Bradley Manning was arrested, held as the main suspect in passing classified documents to the whistleblowing website WikiLeaks. Notice I said held and not charged. Manning wasn't charged until much later. But that didn't stop authorities from keeping him in solitary confinement for nine months, often in conditions many top authorities in this country call torture, before transferring him into a medium security facility. Well, it was about a year and a half before Manning had his first day in court for his pretrial hearing. Now, this Thursday, February 23rd, his actual trial is set to begin. Now, if convicted, he faces life in prison. In the courtroom, we can expect to hear the prosecution talk about how Manning communicated national defense information to an unauthorized source, how he put this country in danger, and how he aided an enemy. What you probably won't hear is about the torturous conditions Manning was held in or about how there's been a lack of harm to national security from the release of these documents. Regardless, it's pretty clear. Manning will be made an example of, setting the precedent the government hopes will dissuade others from committing similar crimes. Uh, this trial is going to be watched by a lot of people, uh, a lot of people on both sides of this issue. Now, starting this evening, a whistleblowers conference at the University of California at Berkeley is being held. It's called Occupy the Truth. In just a few hours, there's actually going to be a Bradley Manning panel. Now, on this panel, uh, the Pentagon's paper author, Daniel Ellsberg. Daniel Ellsberg has been very outspoken about the treatment of Bradley Manning. Uh, he was one of the uh, whistleblowers back from the 70s, and uh, the government didn't like what he did either. But uh, a lot of people now look back on what he did as heroic and uh, inspirational. Also on that panel, Anne Wright and Ray McGovern. Now, one person in attendance will be activist Cindy Sheehan. She joins us now from Berkeley, California. Hey there, Cindy. Uh, you were in some ways a whistleblower yourself, although not uh, on any employer. You just ha have been very outspoken uh, about the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, especially after your son uh, was killed there uh, serving uh, several years ago. Um, talk to me a little bit about what you're doing uh, this weekend in Berkeley and what's on the agenda. Oh. Uh, it's a very interesting format, for one thing. It's very... Um Six people prosecuted um, under the Espionage Act, which is really interesting. Uh, you talk about this transparency um, and this, you know, World War I uh, piece of legislation has been used um, to charge people who have leaked government secrets. Uh, six people may not sound like a lot, but before President Obama, there was only three in the entire U.S. history. So I think that's pretty interesting. Uh, what do you think that says about what's going on here? Well, I... You know, I have... Well, that's floating around here in Washington uh, that's actually called the Whistleblowers Improvement Act, although the only people who would it improve things for would be those committing the wrongdoing. Now, this bill, it's, it requires employees who see some wrongdoing in their companies to first report those wrongdoings to their employer before they take it to any regulatory agencies. It would also take away uh, incentives for these whistleblowers, among other things. Um, now, so far, this bill has only made it its way through the House Subcommittee on Capital Markets and Government-Sponsored Enterprises. Um, but it, it did make its way out, and it could be considered any time by the House Financial Services Committee. Um, so, I mean, just the fact that there are people in this government that are fighting to make conditions more stringent, fighting to make it so, uh, I think another um, provision in that bill would make it so even if uh, the employee does tell a regulatory agency like the SEC, the SEC would have to notify that corporation or government entity before taking any action. I mean, the fact, what do you think it says, Cindy, that, that there are people, uh, elected officials, who seem to be not serving the interests of the people? Well, it, it's the uh, same. Certainly, uh, countless situations of, of whistleblowers or alleged whistleblowers in government and in intelligence fields. Um, and, and of course, uh, within the Dodd-Frank bill, there were supposed to be more whistleblowers within, you know, these big banks, within Wall Street and corporations. Where do you think, Cindy, and we're almost out of time, where do you think would be the best possible place um, to start in terms of expanding rights for whistleblowers? Well, I think that we have to, it has to be a real grassroots uh, people's movement. And I think we're going to be a lot of interesting things discussed and debated. Activist Cindy Sheehan joining us from Berkeley, California.